Have you ever been working on an app only to be stopped in your tracks by an unexpected error? It can be incredibly frustrating, right? If you've ever faced issues with live data and error handling, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into how to effectively manage error states with live data. I totally understand how annoying it is when your app crashes or fails to retrieve data due to an error. You're not alone in this struggle. Many developers face similar challenges when transitioning from RxJava to live data. Here's the specific question we're addressing today. One user asked, how should I handle errors in live data, especially when it's backed by a network resource that might fail due to an IO exception? Sound familiar? Let's explore this together. So what makes error handling in live data different from RxJava? Unlike RxJava's observables, live data does not have built-in callbacks for errors. This means we need to implement our own strategies to manage these situations effectively. And stick around. I have a great tip at the end that will help you streamline error handling in your live data implementation. To handle error states with live data, the user should start by creating a sealed class to represent the different states of the data. This class will include success, loading, and error states. Next, the user should modify their view model to use this sealed class. This allows the view model to emit different states based on the result of the network call. Now, the user should implement the network call in the view model. They can use a try-catch block to handle any potential exceptions, such as I.O. exception. Finally, the user should observe the live data in their UI. This allows them to update the UI based on the current state, whether it's loading, success, or error. Fun fact, did you know that error handling is one of the most overlooked aspects of programming? It's true, many developers focus on features but forget to plan for failures. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. One alternative approach involves creating a custom live data class that handles error states. This user defines a live data result class to hold both data and error information. They then create a live observable data class that subscribes to an observable. When data is received, it posts a live data result with the data. If an error occurs, it posts a live data result with the error instead. Now, let's shift our focus to a different response. This user suggests creating a generic class called resource to manage response data and exceptions. The resource class has three statuses, loading, success, and error. They also introduce an async executor class that runs a callback asynchronously, returning a live data object that captures the loading state, success result, or any exceptions. In the view model, you can create live data that uses async executor to handle synchronous operations and exceptions. In the UI, observe this live data to react to loading, error, or success states. Let's move forward and look at another answer. This user suggests handling error states in live data by creating two separate live data objects. One is for successful network responses and the other is for errors. They demonstrate this with a movie search app where they use mutable live data for both the result list and error handling. In their implementation, when fetching an address, they subscribe to the network call. On success, they post the results to the result list observable. On error, they post the error to the result list error observable. Here's the tip I promised. Always log your errors. This not only helps you debug issues faster, but also improves your app's reliability in the long run. And there you have it. You now have the tools to handle error states in live data effectively. Remember, proper error handling can make your app much more user-friendly. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more tips and stay tuned for our next video on optimizing live data performance.